Hello, I'm Dr. Ron Eaglin. And <clears throat> today's lecture is really going to be on demystifying MVC. The model view controller model, or the model view controller pattern, has been a pattern that's become very popular in web programming. And there's a lot of reasons why it's popular. But for those people that have been working in Visual Studio and .NET and have been very familiar with the concept of web forms applications when they've been building web applications, you can get into the MVC model and say, whoa, what happened to everything? Where's my code? Where's my code behind? Where are my forms? All that disappears. However, I'm going to show you here. This is um, what I've done is I've created the default um, Microsoft Web Project from Visual Studio 2012. And I've created both, I've created it in both MVC and I've created it with Web Forms, and it looks essentially exactly the same. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to do some URL stuff here. I'm going to click on about, and you can see up here at the top that this has got home slash about, so it's got a very logical sounding URL to get to this. But let's go to the code here, or uh, to what's behind the scenes in MVC, and let's decipher how this whole thing works. And really to do this, you've got to start with the controller. So let's go to controllers, okay, I've got, I, and, and they're in the controllers uh, directory, and MVC will have a controllers a models and a views directory because they all work together. But let's first look at controllers. And I have this controller called home controller. And it's a C sharp file. Well, to understand what a controller is, you're essentially looking at, well, when somebody puts a request to a web page, they put that request to the web page with the URL. And something has to decipher that that URL means and display the appropriate information. Well, we've got this controller here that's got quite good at doing this. It's what it does. It's the controller. <clears throat> now, in this controller, I've actually got three things that are going on here. I have um, an action result, an action result, an action result. So that's what's returned. But I've got three methods, index, about, and contact. Well, let's come back over here and see what that actually kind of means. If you notice, this is home about. This is home contact, and what you can't see is this is home index. It's, it's a hidden URL. Well, hmm, interesting here. What happens here? You've got this, you've got this uh, object that looks like a global object called view bag that you put dot message, modify this template to jumpstart your ASP.NET app location, and you can see, guess what? There it is, right there on that index. If I click on about, it says your app description page. If I click on contact, it says your contact page. And if you look over here at this view bag message, you can see it's obvious that that view bag message is actually going over there. And all three of these methods return a view. Well, at this point, you should be saying, where's my code? Okay, where is all that stuff that makes all this stuff appear? Well, we've looked at controllers. And from what we've seen with the controllers, you can, you can take a look at it and say, well, I can see that the home controller seems to be managing that URL that's starting at home and there's three options index about and contact and each of those options seems to do something different well that's getting into the next step of the MVC as you're deciphering this which is the views so let's go over here to the views okay now whereas the controller was in the controllers uh, directory the views are in the views directory and we'll look specifically at and here, the home controller. So now I've got views, I've got home, and if you notice, I've got three files here, about.cshtml, contact.cshtml, and index.cshtml. Well, if I look, let's look at the about one. If you look at the about one, you can see at the about um, view, you can see that, guess what? Look, it, it's quite logical. Here's the code that I have in my about here. Use this area to provide additional information, a side title. This looks like just nice pure HTML. Well, not exactly pure HTML. You've got this at symbol here, but even that's relatively straightforward to see what's happening here. I've got this thing called a view bag and I'm actually in the view and it seems to me that the view bag is displaying information very easily um, right here in the, the title, right here in this H1. You can see that the title shows up there. 
So this view bag actually seems to have properties, and these properties seem to be able to display on different parts of the page. But one of the beauties of the, this model, and it is uh, this pattern, MVC is a pattern, just like Web Forms is a pattern, it looks to be very HTML-centric. This looks very much like HTML. Now, there are some things that you've got here, like you've got this uh, within a list item, you've got an HTML.action link, home index home. Well, if you were doing this in web forms, you would normally think, well, you know, I'm expecting to see a button there or a, um, or maybe a navigate, um, a, a navigate link or something like that. But in here, I'm actually dynamically putting something in here from this HTML.action link, which would be these links here. So, what is that HTML? Well, I can hover over and I can say, well, you know what that is? That's an HTML helper. 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 Um, that's a global object that I've got access to. And what it does is it can render HTML um, elements. And now you've got this really nice, easy ability to render these HTML elements there. Well, we're not going to get into all that in the first lecture. I really would just like to demystify it. But that question that you had if you're a web forms programmer, which is, where is my code? Well, there is my code. Now, it seems to me that a lot of the uh, information that you've got, a lot of the, the code that you've got, seems to be encapsulated with common functionality. In other words, you're using a lot of code here. For example, this action link seems like everything that you need to know about that action link is actually included right here, home, index home. It's got home as the title. It goes to index home. Okay. If I were to click on the About, it would go to About Home and Contact Home. Let's look over here and do this again. If I click on Contact here, okay, it goes to Home Contact. Home Contact with the, with the text Contact. Well, it's kind of easy to start seeing how this stuff is put together. However, this is great if the pages are really static. Um, and in this case, they're not really completely static because you are dynamically creating some things, and you've got this view bag that seems to be putting stuff on the page dynamically. But um, you know, the reality of this is is that it looks like you know this is HTML that you've got here, and this HTML isn't really pulling data from an underlying data model. It isn't pulling anything from from class files. Well, let's go one step a little further here. I've got this page. I, got, I can click the login. And uh, hopefully that will that'll work just fine because uh, I've actually don't have the, the debugger starter. Okay, it works here. Well, now I've got um, I've got hmm I've got a text box right here and a text box right here and I've got a login button. Okay, what we know about the default um, web application, if you build the default web application with Web Forms or MVC, is that that data goes to a database behind the scenes which uses the membership model. Well, it works very well in web forms. I'm pretty much going to have to guess that if I'm doing it in MVC, it's doing the same thing. And somewhere, you've got to have some code that is handling all that, what's going on behind the scenes and how the stuff is getting into and out of the database. Well, so far, we've looked at two parts of the MVC. We've got the, the controller. And we're looking at it backwards, if you noticed, MVC. But we're looking at it from controller, view, model. Well, that is the answer to that question. So what we'll do is, in this case, let's go back over here to, to the account controller. Okay, and the account controller is now a little bit different in that it's controlling some things that have to deal with those pages, which deal with registering an account or logging into an account. Okay, so, but they still have the same basic pattern. So the controller in this case, we'll be a little bit more complex than the controller we had with the home and the about and the contact. And I'm actually scrolling through this. And you can see that there seems to be some code that is managing how you're going to deal with the user accounts. Okay. Well, there's some of my code in the controller. In the end of each of these action results, such as manage, you're still going to have return view. Meaning that with that account control, such as the manage page or the um, um, you know, or any of the pages that you have that deal with, with this, like external login or these other things, you've got to have to have 
something that shows what is going to show up on the page. And sure enough, over here in account, we've got what looks like some pages like we had before, but let's look at one of those pages. So in other words, in the account side, I have an account controller, and if you look over here, if we go to the URL again, we see this account is up in the URL and login is in the URL. Well, by this point, you should be pretty much realizing that that first word, the account, is the controller. And over here, I can see I have an account controller and I have a home controller. If I come over here and I click on register, I clicked on login, I have account register. <clears throat> there is an underlying logic to how all this is working together now. And because I have, I now understand that the controller is controlling what is going to, it controls how it manages and deciphers the URL. Well, guess what? I've got to figure out how I'm going to display stuff onto the screen, but I've got three views, login, manage, and register. And if you look at those individual views, you'll notice that it looks like nice, straightforward HTML. Notice that it has a model attached to it. At the very top, I've got actually, I'm declaring a model. Okay, well, let's talk about that model in just a second. But right now, I can talk about, okay, here's my view. This is the basic guts of what gets displayed onto the screen, even though there seemed to be some logic that was occurring in that controller. Well, how do you determine what logic is displayed on the control from the is done in the controller? Well, look at your default project and read through the code to see what's going on there. But now we can look through this and say, this is actually quite straightforward to me. I have um Okay, I've got this add HTML anti-forgery token. That seems like I would want to have an anti-forgery token, a validation summary. So I'm actually you I'm putting something there. But then I've got this label for, text box for. Well, if I come back over here, I can see label for, text box for. Hmm. And the text box for seems to be, okay, well, that M might be a clue that, that has something to do with the model. Well, the model that we're using here is register model. That tells me, okay, let's go one step deeper. Let's look at, it is MVC, right? Model view controller. We've looked at controllers, we've looked at views. Let's look at models. So now let's go up and if the logical pattern of how MVC is put together makes any sense, if the controllers were in the controllers directory and the views were in the views directory, the models must be in the models directory. And sure enough, if I go to the models directory, I've got account models. And it actually tells me right here, there's an account model that I can look at, register model. Well, let's go up to models, let's look at account models, and let's see if I have a register model. And sure enough, as I look through here, I've got login model, here's my regular model. I mean, sorry, register model. And I can see a few things here. One is I've got a string, or a public string, a property. This is good old C sharp as I know it, a property. But look at what else I've got here. I've got some attributes that I can, so I'm like, well, look, this string has got two attributes, one being the attribute required and one being display. And then I've got a name equals username and I've got the string itself. Well, it seems now that I'm, as I'm looking at this logic pattern of how MVC is put together, and I'm kind of working my way through how this whole thing works, I've got a property. Whenever you've got a property, that's going to be something that you work with on an interface. You can display it. You can retrieve it. You can delete it. You can do other things with it. And there are three properties, username, password, and confirm password, which seem to go right well with this register page. And those three, three properties are just like three properties in here. And those properties have specific attributes that go with them, such as this is required and this is required. This is a data type of data type password. Um, notice that data type, the dot, the password is a, that data type is a, um, looks like it's an enumeration within the data types, okay, or a property within the data types. So, but I've got attributes required and display, required and display, required, well not required here, but display. I've got a compare 
Well, that knowing the logic of how these work is that you've got a comparison that goes between these two. So I've got an attribute that says I need to compare with this, and there's an error message. Well, this is pretty clean code if you're looking at how this whole thing works. The code looks relatively clean to me. And the model for the data that specifically is the model that goes with the page that's right here, which is actually in this case not a page, it's a view. Okay. Well, this defines a lot of how that view is going to operate. So what we've done here is we've separated the controller is that piece that says, oh, I've got a URL. I know what I'm going to do with that URL. I've got to come over here and bring up a specific view. And I may need to do some logic before the view. I may need, but I, but before, but then the end, I'm going to put a view up. I've got the definitions of the views over here. And um, I'm not going to get into, you know, this is the primary. And here we've got these things that look kind of like, um, to me, look very much like user controls, but don't look like full pages. And actually, if you look at the name, it probably kind of says, wow, they're not really full because the name is partial. So they got some way that they work within, probably within a page itself. Okay, well, that's kind of good to know. Or maybe it's a piece of a page and the page contains other things. Well, that would be extremely handy if I could have a view that says, okay, so this piece over here and this piece over here and now I can mix and match those pieces because now I've got good reusability of code. So there seems to be a nice logic, an inherent logic to the way MVC is done. Still a little bit more complex than what you're probably used to with web forms, which is okay. But at this point, I think you've got enough information to kind of get past that demystification here. I've got a controller that seems to control what the application is doing when it receives a, re a request from a user, which is essentially a URL. It's got a view, which controls what goes up onto the page. And then it's got an underlying model, which accounts for how we're going to organize, manage, display, and all the attributes that go with what goes onto that, that page. And there are classes that are very useful for handling all this. So I know the video got a little bit long, but there's a lot more complexity to MVC. This should get you started. If you can build the default application, okay, the default web project within Visual Studio, which is simply doing file, new, project. And if you do the new project, you pick ASP MVC 4. And if you pick that one, and it's going to give you the option to select a template template and if you choose the internet template it's going to create this with the view engine razor we're not going to use the ASPX view engine razor is kind of the uh, and actually I would recommend going with razor because that is the um, basic standard um, view engine for um, MVC notice you do have another a lot of um, different ones there you can build this and actually get up and running and started with this Good programming. I'm hoping that this has kind of gotten you past a little bit of the leapfrog of how to get this all up and operational using MVC. But this is designed for people that have done web forms applications before. Just get you up and running. Thank you very much. Good programming.